Why are we different, Lorraine? Mm. Yes, we are primates, but we're also uniquely human. We always walk, walk on two feet. Unlike other primates that can sometimes walk upright, but mostly walk on all fours, we are always bipedal. And this also led in certain adaptations in our body structure, but also in our behavior. We have a large and complicated brain. And uh, this led to the use and the making of tools, as well as to complicated language. We have sexual dimorphism, which means that even though men and women don't differ that much as far as size is concerned, it's very definitely possible to see um, who is the man and who is the woman, sexual dimorphism. We are omnivores. We can live in a variety of habitats, and make use of a variety of food types. We don't have much body hair if our, we compare ourselves with the other primates. Um, and therefore, thermoregulation is different. Now, we don't know how that developed because body hair isn't preserved in the fossil record, mm -hmm. but we do know that our closest relatives have lots of body hair and we don't and uh, that the way that we regulate our body temperature is different. Then also we have a highly developed language center in, in the frontal lobe, which means that it led to cultural practices. I always joke and say it's not just in modern times that people sit around the Briarface fire and tell tall stories. It led to certain cultural developments. And there was just a question now, why yeah. do we have similar skeleton structure as the chimp? Now let's see if it is so. And the next slide will point that out. If you look at certain things, here you have on top, we as humans, you have your Australopithecus or Australopithecines, and at the bottom you have the chimp. Now why do you have the Australopithecus group here, Colin? Mm -hmm. Remember, we've got the chimps, we've talked about them, we've got the humans. But the middle group, where do they come in? They are regarded as forefathers of the Homo species. In other words, um, they are all extinct now, millions of years ago, and we'll get to them later. But that's why we have them here. And it's actually a, 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 an excellent um, diagram that we have here. Let's, uh, won't you please take us through it? Yeah, I think this is, this is a very important diagram mm. because these are the things that you will get in the exam. They will give you the skulls. And it's either here you have a side view of it, but what if you have a frontal view? And you must be careful when they ask you for visible differences are only the things that you can see. Mm. And um, here you see the skulls from the bottom. Yeah, you have the pelvic girdles, you have the footprints and the foot and the feet of, of, of all three different um, species here. If you just compare the skulls, there are many things that you have to point out and here you have to use terminology and the correct wording as well. Mm. Because many, many times we find that learners lose their marks when we, they talk about the, the, the skull, the whole skull here. If we talk about the size of the skull, um, what do we talk about? You're actually talking about the cranium or the brain box here. If you look at the size of the human, comparing it with the Australopithecus, and uh, you can see more or less these two are very quite similar in size, very small brain boxes. But here you see the brain box or the cranium of humans are much larger, which means that they also host a much larger brain. So what else can you see from this side? Look at the eyebrow ridges. Look at those, you can see very protruding still here, and we don't have yeah, much, that much less of an, prominent. We, we, yeah. No, yeah, it's not as prominent. What you can see also, we talked about the snout, yes, remember? Yes, earlier. and there they can see it. I was just about to point mm. it out. Where there we have, you, can, you don't see it with the chimp as well as with the osteopathies. And then look at the size of the teeth of the chimp. You can see the very big or large canines here and Australopithecus. Why is this not a chimp? You can see the size of the teeth. They are all very gradual in, in line with one another. It's a pity it's, it's cut off here now, but we know we as humans, we don't have those very large canines. Mm. Please don't talk about the foramen magnum. The foramen magnum is this that you see that I'm mm. pointing out here. 
because with a side view, even with a frontal view, you don't see the foramen magnum if they don't ask you, if they ask specifically for visible differences. Take us through the bottom part, okay. because there are also, what can they point out yeah. there? You can only use or, or talk about the foramen magnum if they give you this view. Now, the foramen magnum is the opening at the bottom of the skull through which the spinal cord comes from the skull, the brain connected to the spinal cord. Um, and here you can see the foramen magnum much more to the back of the skull, which, is, which correlates with a quadru quadruple or quadrupedal way of walking. With the australopithecines that started to walk upright, it's starting to move to the front. And in the homo species, walking upright all the time, it is more in the middle of the skull because the skull is balanced on the uh, um, spine. If we look at the dental arc or the dental arcade, there you can see we're talking about this area. Look here, very square. We can see the large canines and we can see the gap between the canines and the incisors. This is called the diastema. There we have a much round, more rounded dental arcade. We don't have the prominent canines. And if there is a diastema, it's very, very small. Much more rounded. Definitely no prominent canines and no diastema at all. And also from this drawing, you can see the bigger brain box mm. and the smaller brain boxes. If you look at the pelvis colon, yeah, look at the pelvis, look at the size of it, and look at the shape of it. A chimp, because it walks on all four legs, because it is quadrupedal, you will find that the body weight is not as harsh on the pelvic girdle as it would be with an, a, an, a bipedal organism. And that mm. is why it's broader and wider, and look how big is ours in comparison and with And that's it. to support the weight. Yeah. And um, so you can see the difference in size. It's long and narrow. We Oh, we have a much wider and broader and stronger pelvic girdle because it needs to keep the weight of the body up. And there you see the different footprints. Look at this. All the toes is in line with the other toe. The big toe is in line with the other toe. The Australopithecus, you will see, it's a bit away of the rest. And look at this. You can see this is still used a lot to grab things. And um, that is why you can also see, if you look at the footprints, you can see the knuckle walk of the chimpanzee mm. here. And um, there's a very important question for you, Lorraine. Why is it that um, changed the forehead, the size of the okay. forehead? Okay, quite a few questions that I can answer in one. It's what made the forehead to change? Mm. Now, I think what was asked for the forehead to change was the bigger forehead, mm. more flatter forehead. And that was the development of the frontal lobe of the brain, which is where our intelligence is situated. And amongst other things, our language center which is unique to humans. And remember, that was one of the characteristics, was the fact that we have language, a unique type of language. So that made the frontal lobe bigger. And so the forehead had to be bigger. And then also, uh, um, is our intelligence measured by the size of the brain box? Yes, to a certain extent, with an increase in the brain size. Um, there was an increase in the cranium or brain box. But of course, you know, having done the nervous system yet, uh, um, already, I hope, that intelligence is not just measured by brain size, but also by the grooves on the brain and by many other factors. But in general, between these groups, primates, australopithecines, or other primates, the ape-like primates, australopithecines, and the homo, there was an increase in intelligence. And, and not just being clever, but also the type of intelligence, of which language, then the use of it, making of tools, were just a few. And then the last question, um, what about the size of our spines? In other words, our backbones. That obviously, Colin, depends on the size of the organism. Mm -hmm. And the australopithecines very shorter than modern man, so it would be shorter. But the basic shape, the fact that we have a curved spinal cord the same, in, again, comparison with the 
less curved spinal cord of the primates because they didn't walk upright. You have a curved spinal cord if you walk upright because that curved spinal cord can absorb shocks. Yeah, I think that the question was more, was more um, of the S-shaped curve. Yes, and, and, the and but it was one. about yes. the size too. Yeah. 